Hey, fifth grade. Happy Monday. We're going to continue reading today. I am going to read to you 74, 75, and 76. And on your own, you can read 77, 78, and 79. Okay? Hope you enjoy. Listen carefully, guys. Byron's finger getting turned into a steam and going, Psst. I will burn not just one finger. I will burn your entire hand, then send you to juvenile home. Byron closed his eyes and screamed. Right when the fire was going to give him a good roasting, Joetta ran across the room, sounding like the little engine that it could. She blew the match out before it got to him. She thought she missed, though, because he stood there huffing and puffing and patooing at the match even after it went out. Mama's hand, Byron's finger, and the match were soaked with Joey's slob. Honey, we agreed, didn't we? Yes, Mommy. Joey looked down and said, But I thought you got him. Not yet, sweetheart, but I'm going to. Four more times, Mama lit a match, and four more times, Joey patooed them out. Finally, Mama got sick of having slob all over her hand and gave up. That night, Byron had to deal with Dad. No picnic, but a lot better ending to his Nazi parachutes movie than Captain Byron Watson gets captured and burned alive by the evil snake woman with his own flamethrower of death. Okay, we're going to move on to chapter six. It's called Swedish Creams and Welfare Cheese. Mama stuck her head into the living room and said, Byron, I want you and Kenny to go up to Mitchell's and get some milk, a loaf of bread, and a can of tomato paste for dinner. She waved a little piece of paper at us that had the grocery list written on it. How come Kenny can't go by himself? Byron, I want a half a gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, and a small can of tomato paste. If you asked Mama why you had to do something and she didn't feel like explaining, she just repeated herself. She was chopping up onions for spaghetti sauce, and I guess the tears made it, so she didn't feel like talking. If you were stupid enough to ask your question again, there would be the loudest quiet in the world coming from Mama. If you went totally crazy and asked the question a third time, you might as well tie yourself to a tree and say, ready, aim, fire. Byron got the message and jerked up off the couch and walked over to the TV and punched the off knob. I knew this wasn't going to be fun. A fun walk up to Mitchell's. We went into the kitchen. Give me the money. Just sign for it. Just what? Just tell Mr. Mitchell you want to sign for it. Mama kept whacking the onions. What? Just go in there and tell Mr. Mitchell I want to sign for some food? Your daddy and me made all the arrangements last weekend, Byron. Mr. Mitchell will let us sign for groceries until a payday. Lots of people do it. A half a gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, and a small can of tomato paste. Mama started chopping the onions a little harder. So I don't gotta give him no cash? Whack, whack, whack. All of a sudden, Byron's face jumped like a bell went off in his head. Wait a minute. I know what this is. We on welfare, ain't we? I held my breath. If I found out we were on welfare, I was really going to have to get ready to be teased. No, we're not on welfare. I can't believe it. You're really going to start selling welfare food in this house? You're really going to make me go embarrass myself by signing a wafer list for some groceries? I guess I hadn't been counting how many times the mama had repeated herself. She smacked the knife on the kitchen counter and jumped up right in Bai's face. Okay, guys, continue reading 77, 78, and 79, and please fill out a form for today's work. Okay, have a great day. Bye, guys.